I talked a little last month about how long JRPGs can take up a lot of time, and this was a theme of my November too, although I did at least manage to finish one. A certain story-heavy JRPG continued to take up most of my November, but the triumphant feeling when I finished was well worth it, and although it came at the cost of not finishing other things, I did at least try a few things that I was planning to, along with some surprises to help make for a November with some variety. I'm already into December's releases, so I'm especially excited to share what I played last month, so let's get into the JRPGs I played in November. I don't know how good it is to have had the same JRPG as JRPG of the Month for three months in a row, but Trails from Zero was a JRPG taking up the majority of my time for at least the last two, and each month I came to love it even more that makes me feel like putting it here once again. This time though, I can actually say I finished it, and even got my review out for it recently, that means I can completely move on to another game, but I'm not doing that without feeling like there's a hole in my life now that I've finished, which is a nice feeling to have every now and again. Every day I spent playing Trails from Zero really was something special as the slow unfolding plot kept showing me something new, and it definitely became a joy to play in every session, especially towards the end with all the payoff it gives you for sticking with it. It's thanks to that payoff that I'm a little tempted to go back and check out alternate conversations, extra quests, and the treasure chest lines I missed as everything together really does make for a world that is very fulfilling to play in. If you want to know more of my Trails from Zero thoughts, aside from the fact that I miss it a little, feel free to check out my full review, and I can at least miss playing it knowing that we'll see it continuation in Trails to Azure next year. If you're looking to get hyped for Trails, this crossbell arc is definitely bringing back the excitement I had for this series, and while it was a big game, I'm glad to say I really enjoyed my time in Zero's special story-rich world. My main plan for November was initially to play as much Pokemon Scarlet as possible. I was fairly ready for this since I pre-ordered it, and it arrived on release day as it should, but I wasn't totally ready for it as I didn't finish Trails from Zero until the 25th, so with only 5 days in the month left and a Trails review I wanted to make, there was basically no time to make a review for Scarlet, especially with December's games looming. I did still want to play it though, so I fired it up on the way home one evening, chose my starter, and thought that would be it for my Pokemon Scarlet journey for a while. This was about half an hour of play that meant I didn't have a lot of impressions about it, aside from his scenes looking nice compared to the horror stories I've heard about his visual performance, but it was when helping my boyfriend with EV training recently that I was able to get more of an insight into what it is. From that, so far, I really like the feeling of how big the world is that was something I loved about Arceus and was glad to see again. I do miss the Pokedex conditions that Arceus had, but Scarlet still felt nice to play with the more modern graphic style, even if it does occasionally have some frame rate hiccups and the camera does occasionally get confused where the floor is. I did enjoy my short time running around on a majestic legendary Pokemon getting a small peek at the world though, and hearing about other people's experience does still make this something I want to play with, maybe around Christmas since that's where I seem to find time for this nostalgic series. I'd love to hear how you guys have been enjoying it, if you've experienced performance issues, or if you've been enjoying it too much to care, and I look forward to getting back to it and giving my adorable Croc Pokemon some proper love, as it's always nostalgic and fun to have a new Pokemon game to play. While I was pretty busy with Trails in November, I've been getting a little better with carving out time to check out other things, along with giving myself some free time to spontaneously look at things too, which gave me a chance to check out the November release I wanted to try most, along with a couple of other things. Monochrome Mobius was the release I was most excited for in November, but didn't buy as it was only released on PC in English, but in Japan it released on PS5 and PS4 with a free demo no less, so that demo gave me a chance to try and confirm if it's something I want to play. It passed my usual test to playing about 15 minutes, then deciding to put it down as I intend to play the full experience, with its smooth graphics along with cute designs and characters' ways of speaking, confirming that there's definitely things to like about it. Because of that, I'll either leave it for when I get a gaming PC or Steam Deck setup, which is probably a while off, but I'd absolutely try it if it got an English release on console, with the latter being what I'll hope for, as that would mean I can try it sooner rather than later. I did also manage to fit in a couple more things, one likely from left field and the other based on a collaboration 
collaboration I heard about that had a limited time campaign. The first thing that I've actually been trying since October but wondered whether or not to mention is Ring Fit Adventure, and I've decided to talk about here as it is developed in Japan and does have RPG elements that make it pretty fun. For those who don't know, it's a fitness RPG where you move your actual body to play with the help of the Ring Con and ended up in my house when my boyfriend bought it for himself. I ended up asking to try it too as it looked super fun since you fight monsters in it while moving and doing exercises with the Ring Con, and seeing HP bars going down while doing reps of exercises I never thought I'd do has proven pretty fun, which is surprising for me as someone who's never been into exercise. If you think JRPG elements could help you add more movement to your life if that's what you want, it's a bit easier to find these days and I think it's pretty fun, and while I won't be mentioning it every month as it's a little borderline as a JRPG, know that it's part of my weekly routine now as I'm keen to finish its campaign and have more fun with it in general, and would love to hear if any of you guys did or still use it as I was surprised at just how much it appealed to me. The final thing I tried in November is slightly more predictable, which is Japan's Full Metal Alchemist Mobile's Persona 5 collaboration, which gave me a good excuse to try the game finally that I always thought looked great and also allowed me to secure the Morgana unit that was the login bonus for its campaign. I also really enjoyed trying it. It's a high quality retelling of the story I remember from Full Metal Alchemist anime that I really enjoyed seeing in a more 3D form and will be something I hope to jump into more, perhaps the next time it has an event that makes me want to play again. Of course I also hope it gets a western release as it's interesting enough that fans of the series who like the idea of a tactical game based on the anime will probably enjoy it, so I'll also be keeping an eye out and hoping that we hear something about it coming over someday too. Overall, I'm glad these experiences could help add some variety to my November as I mostly spent time in one really big game, and I'm curious to see if experiences like this will help color my December as that gets underway too. December has already begun and Simi got some JRPG time in with Adventure Academia that I was happy to receive a code for recently that I enjoyed a lot and will likely be out near when this video comes out. Since then, I've been patiently waiting for one of this month's bigger releases that will likely be the final thing I review this year. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion comes out on December 13th that I'm planning to pick up as I remember enjoying Crisis Core in university on PSP but never getting the chance to properly finish, so it's gonna be fun to finally do that in a new and gorgeous form. And since I was one of the people who liked what Square did with Final Fantasy VII Remake, I have a feeling this new Crisis Core will likely be something I enjoy, so much so that I'm even holding off on preparing my Game of the Year video until I finish in case it's really good. Also coming out this month is Dragon Quest Treasures that also comes out on the 9th and I think looks really cute. The only reason I'm not picking it up is to keep her over Crisis Core Reunion as realistically I only have time for one of them, but I thought I'd put it here to ask if any of you guys have tried it and if it's fun as it does look like an adorable way to spend some time with Dragon Quest again. Overall, I think this month is full of some good and fun JRPG choices that I'm excited to see people play on top of the games that some of us may try to fit in before the end of the year. Whatever it is you play, I hope everyone has fun as this year comes to a close with some interesting things to finish it off with. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played last month and what you plan to play this month. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!